Here's everything that you need to know about Mount Skeagol. Welcome to another Ski Long with Matthew Zabransky. That's me. Uh, super excited for this episode. We're going to be checking out Ski Goal, which is a uh, really a small nonprofit ski area in Nisswa, Minnesota. Let's dive right into some basic information before we head into the POVs for this one. The date that we actually filmed all the POV footage that you're going to be seeing on screen in just a second here was February 5th of last year. Kind of mid-season conditions. It was actually a nice sunny day, a little bit on the colder side. The location of the ski area, as we said earlier, is in Nisswa, Minnesota, which is about two and a half hours northwest of the Twin Cities. As far as their hours go, since they are a smaller hill, they have a little bit of different schedule compared to some of the other main ski areas that we've seen in the Midwest. They run a Friday through Monday schedule where they're typically open Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. But because of holidays and some other things like that, it can vary a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and put up on screen where they have this awesome calendar that kind of highlights what days they're going to be open, hours, all that information. Um, so you can head on over there and check that out, make it really simple and easy. But it is one of those ski areas that does have a little more limited hours. So you just want to check before you go just to make sure that they're going to be open when you're trying to travel out there. As far as pricing for tickets, this is a really affordable ski area. And one of the reasons that I absolutely love it, a uh, weekend holiday adult rate is just $45 youth. 32 $10 for five and under weekdays are even cheaper than that at only $30 they also have rental services as of course just check out their website for the most up-to-date information as far as multi-pass membership they are not part of any of the major passes such as indie pass epic pass or icon pass however they do have reciprocal deals with some of their local ski areas so just go ahead and check out their website for more information on that because they do have some discounts like andy sour hills detroit mountain Number of trails, they have 11 trails and lifts. They have one triple chair, one rope toe, a carpet, and a tubing carpet as well. So they do offer tubing. Vertical rise, we always get this from Google Earth just so it's the most accurate. They are coming in at just about 285 feet of vertical rise, which is actually pretty good. Uh, and I would say a little bit around the average mark for most of our Midwestern ski areas. But with that out of the way, let's jump on over to the POVs. All right, we're going to start on the left side of the hill as we always do. Lookers left, and this is their high-speed rope toe, and this rope is serious. I have skied a lot of ropes. Um, Highland is probably one of my top. This is modeled after that Highland rope, and it is fast, and it gets you up there, and it's dedicated to its park. Speaking of parks, this is their park right here. It's a phenomenal park, especially for where they're located in the cities. I think this park takes the cake um, in the area as far as nice, flowy parks. They do a great job maintaining this easily lappable none of the features are massive so if you're a beginner intermediate and even advanced you're going to find a lot of things that they offer here they switch it out relatively regularly just a nice looking park with some side hits some good jump features and of course some jibs as well Moving on over, this is the Magic Carpet. Now, just a year ago, I believe, they extended this to come a little bit further down to give it a little more length. This is a really nice beginner's area. It has a really consistent but mellow pitch. And as you can see, the carpet, nice and wide, slow and get onto, easy for beginners. And what's nice about this is it's right in front of the chalet. So if you're a mom or dad and you're just hanging around, you can watch your the little guys get up there, you have full sight of them the entire time. There's two runs that kind of splinter off this. You can either go left or right. They're basically the same, and we're going to do that right now. So this is technically called Bunny Hill, which obviously is their beginner run here. Very, very mellow pitch. Good enough to learn on. Great learning terrain. Very wide. Nothing to run into. And obviously very close and easily lappable onto that lift. So just a really nice beginner's area right here. Moving on up, we are going to take the triple chair. This is the only chairlift at the ski area. It's a riblet triple, and it's a really nice chair, and it services actually a lot of terrain. This is something I was really surprised when and even my wife, who's kind of a novice skier, came here for the first time. We were very impressed with how much terrain and varied terrain that they have for being such a small ski area. Um, they have runs for every pitch, as you're going to see in just a minute here, and it's all serviced by this triple chair. So this is a good example of having a family can all go ride one chairlift, go separate directions, and they all kind of get funneled back to the same chair, which is really cool, kind of unique with these uh, this single chair here that everybody comes down to the same spot. 
but it really does serve as a good variety of terrain. And we're going to actually start off coming, making a left off of this uh, chairlift and skiing that run over there, which will connect back to the bunny run, which we did just a second ago. Alrighty, this run is called Quarter Deck. It is a blue square, so this would be kind of like your next step. There is another option, which we'll get to later, which is Super 8, which is much more mellow. But this will feed right into that bunny hill, as you can see, it's going to kind of dog leg to the left. And then straight ahead, that's where we just were on the bunny hill. So this is a great kind of next step if you're looking for something to ski, um, you know, after working on the Magic Carpet area. This would be another option, then Super 8 would be the next one in line. There are two runs on our left here that we did not get POVs of, and they're just kind of cut overs to the run next to us, which we're going to do in just a second here. But as you can see, kind of has a nice little head wall coming off the top and then mellows out and kind of has a consistent mellow pitch going all the way down into the chalet. We're going to kind of swing right past the main chalet here. They have a really nice fire pit outside. Wave hello to those individuals that are out there. And it is going to loop back on over to that triple chair. Coming back up at the top here, this is, it's a little bit of a mixture of two runs here. It's Kragen's Cutoff and Breezy at the bottom. I think Kragen's Cutoff is labeled as a black diamond. It has a little steep head wall, as you can kind of see here. And then it's going to work into Breezy as we get about halfway down. This is a really nice lappable run here. You're going to get a, some nice turns in at the beginning, and then it starts to kind of mellow out just a little bit, kind of take that dog leg to the left. And then right here, I believe, is technically Breezy. So this is kind of can join back up and kind of cut you back to that main triple chair. Really nice run, has a nice kind of front face to get some really nice turns in, mellows out, but still consistent and uh, pitched enough that you can get some solid turns in on breezies on that second leg of this run. This would be like one of the two signature runs I would say that Skeagle has. This is uh, Kavanaugh's, and this run is awesome. Just directly under the chair, direct pitch, Kind of has a little bit of like a flatten out here and then dive back in. It's a really nice pitch. You can lap this all day. This is what I found myself skiing a lot of this and Paul Bunyan's, which we're going to do in just a second here. Um, this one, I'm going up into the trees, and there are some little pockets that you can kind of dive into some of these tree areas over here. Ooh, a nice, really nice lappable run. Gotta love this one. Now, this is almost the same run, but we're going to go on the left side, skier's left side of the towers, and we're going to go on to an offshoot called Madden's. and has a steeper head wall. It's probably the steepest run that they have at Ski Goal. So this is kind of the main area here. But as you're going to see, we're going to peel off onto the left. And this is what's called Madden's, And this is the steepest run that they have at Ski Goal. Very short, but very sweet. You can see just a handful of turns on the steeper pitch. And then it's going to kind of feed you right back into that triple chair that we were just at. So nice area for kids to test their abilities, get a couple of really steep turns in before coming back to the chair. If you're looking for a more steady pitched black diamond or, you know, harder run, Paul Bunyan is it. This is another one that I could just lap all day. You know, it has a little more consistent pitch than something like a Madden's. So it's going to kind of shoot you up left side of that, come straight through. Great consistent pitches. You can see they have the B netting up. This is their race hill as well, and for good reason. Good pitch, consistent, fun turns on it. I mean, it's it's a good one. You're not going too far away from the chair. You can get back to it fairly easily, as you can see on here. Next, we have Ivan's. This one kind of comes out a little bit further, and then it's going to dog leg to the to uh, skiers right here. This is labeled a blue square. Just a nice kind of cruising run here. Tree lined, I love that about Skeagle that every one of their runs is basically tree lined. It is pretty well defined. That's pretty cool. But it kind of is shaped like a little bit of a bowl here. And there are offshoots if you go onto my, what we're looking at the left side of that. There's some kind of tree gladed areas which we'll get a better view of when we do Super 8 that the kids can kind of go in and find those little runned out runs with little side hits and things like that. So kids would actually love both this run, Ivan's, and Super 8, which we're going to do in just a second here. And last but not least, we're going to do Super 8. Now, I got to go under this uh, this race start here because this is just so fun. It's got like a little tunnel. I'm sure kids would love this. And then it's going to kind of just come on the backside over here, and it's going to wrap all the way around that side of the resort. Very mellow pitch. There was no moment, though, that I felt that I had to really pull or do anything like that, but you do have to maintain some speed through this section. 
Uh, the snow was relatively fast when we were there that day because it was real it was pretty cold out um, but this is one of those runs like if you were looking for the next step or the easiest way from the chair super eight is going to be the way to do it and then like i said the quarter deck would be your next one in line um, but this is a great one to get warmed up on if you have young, young kids it's a really long run because of the dog leg and then as you can see on screen here there are some offshoots on the right hand side that kind of cut through the trees and actually link up with the run that we just did Ivan's. So you'll see a lot of kids kind of cut off and go into those zones, which is actually really, really cool. There's actually a hidden run kind of in between those two runs, which isn't labeled, but um, I saw a lot of kids in there as I was filming this as well. And this will just link back up to that triple chair, so everybody kind of comes back to the same place. So that's Ski Goal. Let's talk about a couple things that we did miss. The Jack's Jump expansion, which I'm really excited about. It's basically going to be located right above where the train park is right now and we're going to put some drone footage of that on screen you have them clearing in that area but it's going to be a dedicated jump area that's going to have its own rope toe in there as well two lines of jumps it looks really awesome they're hoping to have that finished sometime this season probably mid-season um so look out for that as well it's going to be a great addition to this hill overall i love ski goal for what it is it's a small community-based hill for sure but I think it's definitely worth visiting from the Twin Cities once a year. It has a good variety of terrain. It's never super duper crowded. All of the runs are tree-lined, feel really defined, and they all have like a, their own characteristics that kind of make them their own. They don't feel like you're skiing the exact same run every run that you go to. They also have a great beginner's area, tubing, something for almost everybody in a community-based hill. Obviously, pricing is very inexpensive as well, so it's a great option on those holiday weekends or times that you might be blacked out on other passes to head up there. It's about two and a half hours from the Twin Cities and check it out. I also got to give a huge shout out to their terrain park team over there. It is awesome. It is by far one of the better terrain parks in Minnesota. Their, their rope is great. The layout's great. Everything about it is phenomenal, especially given the location. But that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this ski along at Skigol. Um, it was a lot of fun. I would definitely recommend checking this one out. But until next time, I hope all of you have a great week. Pray for that snow, and we'll see you out there.